early adopters of the BD770i, the 8th core Ryzen 7 7000 series. You're welcome, 7745HX, eight cores. There might be another version of this coming, but now this thing does bifurcation and a whole bunch of other things and a BIOS update. Maybe the 3D vCache thing is coming. Hey, if Ryzen's not your speed, what about 13900 in this format? Okay, it's 13900HX. It's technically meant for laptops, but again, Mini's forum is getting creative. And this thing has a heck of a lot more onboard connectivity. There's two M.2 slots underneath this Heatsink. It's a very similar layout, but look on the back of the board. You've also got two more M.2, a total of four 80 millimeter M.2. Yes, this thing uh, is pretty substantial. It's got the same built-in cooler. You bring your own 120 millimeter fan. If you didn't check out the other review, Mini's form is getting into ITX motherboards, and I can't say that I blame them. This is a pretty genius thing to do because they can offer these at a lower cost than you can get sort of mid-market parts or even upper middle of the road parts. In fact, I think the pricing on these is so disruptive that it sort of gives the secondary market a run for its money. What do I mean by the secondary market? Well, it's like you're looking to do an upgrade because you've got something ancient. You're still rocking a, an AM3 Plus or an i5 2500K, 2600K, and you're looking at uh, machines that other people are getting rid of. Maybe you're looking at like a 10th gen Intel or you're looking at, you know, Zen 2, something like that. This kind of disrupts that proposition, or at least it's going to really depress the prices on the used market because there's a lot of value here in that you're getting the modern computational experience, albeit meant for laptops. That said, again, this is a heck of a value. Let's take a look at the board layout. You get your standard 24 pin ATX power connector along with your 8 pin 12 volt connector. You've got three 4 pin fan headers along the front edge of the motherboard. You've got your, your 20 pin USB 5 gigabit header. And then you've also got your front panel connector. There's no type C header breakout or anything like that on this motherboard. Yes, you do have a full X16 connection on the AR900i, so your GPU is going to run at full bandwidth PCI Express 4 up to. There is also an optional M.2 fan header on the reverse side of the motherboard. Maybe that's something that Mini's Forum has planned or an extra accessory kit or something like that that you can get. They've also integrated an extra heat spreader for the CPU because that 13900HX can run exceedingly warm when you uh, unchain it uh, in terms of power your power limits. If you're looking to build a high performance mini PC that has PCIe expansion with an ITX form factor, <laughs> this is basically cheat codes. Just add RAM and you're good to go. Well, just add RAM and a GPU. I mean, you can run the iGPU on an Intel platform, but no one ever runs the iGPU on an Intel platform. At least not yet. Not until Intel really updates their Meteor Lake stuff. I mean, this, a Meteor Lake in a platform like this? I mean, I could, Mini's form could make that happen. Maybe with overclocking and some other stuff. But for now, 13900HX, it's basically the same experience as desktop 13900, but in a more constrained power and thermal envelope. But still, those cores do perform well, and you get a lot of them in the 13900HX. Like a lot of P and E cores. But enough of that, let's do a build and see how it performs. When I say just bring your own fan or add a fan, what do I mean? This is the uh, Noctua NF-A12 25PWM. This is a really good static pressure fan. This is probably one of the best static pressure fans you can get. It's 120 millimeter. It's designed to just go right on there like that. Boom. If you don't want to spend anywhere near that, you can also get the P12 Max. This is a high performance 120 millimeter PWM fan. It's not quite as good, but it is much, much less expensive. And I've been very, very happy with the Arctic setup that I have to, uh, you know, sort of side by side with my other setup. So you've got options, and that's for CPU cooling. And keep in mind, this is a 13900, you are gonna want some, some high airflow. For the BD770 that I did, the AMD, I used the P12 Slim. The P12 Slim, it sure seems like you're gonna need something that moves a little bit more air than the P12 Slim, so uh, might affect your choices somewhat. And this is basically it. This is your whole machine. It is add your own rear I.O. cover, just like the last one, but I love this. This is their 6950 XT that I had on the shelf. This is a monster, monster graphics card that is not gonna bottleneck the ASRock OC formula. And look at this. The, the graphics card is three times the weight and three times the volume of the entire rest of the computer. That's the, the state that we're in now, the, the, the sort of fun thing that we do. Uh, maybe the Founders Edition RTX 4070. This is a much worse deal. You can definitely get a better deal in terms of frames per dollar 
on AMD than you can with Nvidia right now, but even though I say that, looking at our uh, purchase click-throughs, not everybody listens to me, so. 13900HX. What are you, what's what's the difference? HX? I mean, it's 13900. Is that like a 13900K? What is it? It's not like a 13900K. Although you do get eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. It's really kind of laughable that this would be called a CPU part because it will run at 120 watts all day long. Now, at 120 watts, you will see thermal throttling, at least at the default mini's form configuration, of around 80 degrees C. So it really doesn't let the CPU get super toasty. But at 80 degrees C and 120 watts, you know, your multi-core performance in CPU-Z is over 12,000. And your burst performance is going to be up near 5 gigahertz and beyond. So for gaming and everything else like that, it's actually pretty good. If you had the highest in 4090 and you wanted to go for the highest frame rates at 1080p, well, yeah, you do leave a little performance on the table there. Maybe it would be more advantageous to have a really overclocked 13900K or 14900K desktop processor. But for a 13700, 13900, no K, there's really functionally not a lot of difference between these two. Okay, strictly speaking, there is a difference between those two because there are certain motherboards that will allow those non-K processors to run at 250 watts all the time. And the performance difference between 120 watts and 250 watts, for multi-core, it can be substantial. But for things that are lightly threaded, things like gaming, etc., there's really not that much of a difference. And considering the cost savings of the entire platform versus a higher end 13900K system, this value really is pretty incredible. If you're trying to decide between this and the 7745HX from Mini's Forum, the BD770i, the other one that I have, I'm actually hoping to, there's a version of this coming probably that includes 3D vCache. That's not out yet, that's not official, that may be a thing, maybe it's a thing by the time you're watching this. That's something to look for. But this is eight cores. This is eight cores plus 16 efficiency cores. So for multi-core performance, the Intel's gonna win hands down across the board, no problem. And in the 120 watt power envelope, which is very impressive because it's similar-ish to the power envelope of our BD770i. For gaming, however, the BD770i takes the crown. This is more efficient. This is gonna run a little cooler in the same workloads, the same configuration as I kind of alluded to when I was talking about the fans. So if you're on the fence between do I want this one or do, do I want that one, the performance is really gonna be very similar for most things between the two of them, but you do have 32 threads with this that you can load up and do stuff. So if you have a lot of background tasks, or if you're looking to run this as like the cornerstone of like a home server setup or home lab setup, you can get a lot more threads on this platform. Otherwise, the two platforms are, are pretty similar. The Intel platform has also doubled the expandability. You've got two more M.2 slots, and that's just a combination of Intel's chipset and the, the way that the, uh, the lanes are set up. But everything is Gen 4. I mean, okay, you could theoretically maybe, but really your storage connectivity and everything else, it's Gen 4. And you could do the M.2 cheat codes. At level one techs were famous for shoving things in your M.2 slot that's not an M.2. Networking, networking extension, you could turn those back into PCIe slots, assuming that you can provide supplemental power. You've got some flexibility with this platform in terms of being able to do that. But, uh, you know, does it make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things having four M.2 instead of two? Well, you can actually do Intel VMD, but the BIOS from Mini's forum is a little limited. On the BD770i, they just added bifurcation support and a manual selection for PCIe generation mode because the auto detect wasn't super amazing on the AMD platform. I can tell that it's a little improved on the Intel platform in terms of PCIe generation, auto detect, and that sort of thing. But Mini's forum really doesn't have a complicated BIOS and this is not meant for you to do a lot of off-label use cases. It does have a competent Wi-Fi solution and your two and a half gigabit LAN is nice. You could add a 10 gigabit M.2 Wi-Fi expansion, but at that point you're spending, you know, a third to half of what you spent on the entire rest of the platform. So I don't know, does that make sense? Is that a thing that happens in reality? Eh, probably not. The thing that I think that Mini Swarm could have done 
is added a USB Type-C connector. That's really the only thing missing, and that's missing on, on both of these. You do have the dual front panel connector, and there are adapters that'll turn to USB 5 gigabit back into the Type-C connector, so you could take the front panel connection that you have and get a single Type-C if you really want a Type-C, but it would be nice to have a USB 2.0 header, a USB 3.0 header, and a Type-C header, or two USB 3.0 headers, two 20-pin headers, and a Type-C header. That's sort of the modern combination that we're at, and it was probably just a real estate problem, like finding somewhere physically in order to add that connector. At the end of the day, this really doesn't leave a lot to be desired, though. There's not a lot to complain about, and using this as a starting point for your ITX build makes a lot of sense monetarily, but also performance-wise. It's like, would you want a uh, used 9900K or a 10900K given the performance that you can get out of this on the secondary market? And the answer is no. You, you probably would be better off with, with this or this especially at the price point. And yeah, Mini's Forum is not an ASUS or ASRock or an MSI or a Gigabyte in terms of BIOS support and everything else, but I think they're also doing something really innovative with this type of platform. I'm genuinely surprised that we haven't seen anybody else do this kind of thing uh, in, in a more mainstream kind of a way, because you really can get a lot of mileage out of a platform like this. Is the reason the big names aren't doing this? Because it would eat into their desktop motherboard sales and everything else? I don't know. It's maybe, maybe, maybe that's part of it, because I really am not seeing a ton of downsides here, other than it's just a repackaged notebook processor and a desktop form factor, but when you just let it run unconstrained in terms of power, the performance is there. I don't know. I'm Wendell to Level 1. I'm signing out. This has been a quick look at the the uh, AR900i from Mini's Forum with the 13900HX. And if you're thinking, oh, I, I want something in 14th gen, you can just pretend. There's not a lot of difference between 13th gen and 14th gen. They're, they're basically identical and probably just an oversight on Intel's part that this wasn't labeled 14th gen because 13th and 14th gen desktop, not a lot of difference. So if you want to think of it as 14th gen, you go right ahead. That's really functionally about the same. All right, I'm signing out. <laughs> Kitchen, <laughs> was that rage bait for the comments? Engagement challenge. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you in the forums.